So last year I did a little series called Castle Rock Recap. For many reasons, frankly. Many reasons. It was a Stephen King shared universe show. The show looked amazing. Uh, one of the head writers was Mark Bernardin, who I absolutely love. And also because I met such a phenomenal fan base that just absolutely loved the show. So I'm going to do some again this year. It's not Castle Rock, because season two is not out yet. Oh no no. This time I'm going to go deep, falling in love, hopefully, with a new show on AMC based on one of my favorite books by Stephen King's son, Joe Hill, Nosferatu. Let's start out with theme music here. Come on. What is up, everybody? I'm Robbie from the Nerdy Nomicon. I'm known in some circles as the gaming, television, and film equivalent to being transported to a magical inscape called Arbor Day Land. It's far more sinister than it sounds, and fans of Nosferatu will hopefully get that joke. So tonight, the first episode is start is starting out, and I cannot wait. I was going to grab as a prop the uh, novel that I have because I do have the hardcover, but it's in a different bookshelf and I frankly forgot to grab it. So I'm just going to be clutching the graphic novel, also written by Joe Hill, tightly. Joe Hill is one of my favorite authors. He's the writer of obviously Nosferatu, The Wraith, Lock and Key, which you can probably see up there on the set, uh, Horns, Heart Shaped Box, The Fireman. but. So few of his IPs have been given the green light to go ahead and bring their thrills, chills, and terror to either big or small screens, with the exception of Horns, which was lackluster to say the to say the least. Lock and Key was picked up by or was um, optioned by Fox, but they decided to not move forward with it because I guess it was too scary. After everybody watched and loved the pilot when it was shown at I believe San Diego Comic Con, don't quote me on that. But tonight, man, this has been a long time coming. We're going to check out and I'm going to react to and review the pilot episode of Nosferatu. His third, yeah, third full novel um, tells the story of Vic McQueen, who has a very strange ability and her going up against Charlie Manx, another man with a very similar type of ability, but we'll get into this and uh, frankly because I don't want to drop it right now because what if the show decides to go in a different direction? I mean, this is supposed to be season one of an ongoing series and the novel was only, you know, yay thick. So, I mean, they've got plenty of stuff that they can go with. They've got plenty of world building that they can, you know, move ahead with. But what kind of changes are they going to make? What kind of things are gonna, they gonna keep the same? How are they gonna keep the story going? Because the story was finite. So, I don't know. I I have no idea. But uh, I'm gonna go now. Uh, it starts in like five minutes, so I'll be right back after I check out the pilot episode. See ya. While you're waiting for my backwards cap wearing egotistical face to return, I wanna take this opportunity to give a big, loving, embracing bear hug to all of my followers over on Patreon.com. I call you guys the pop cultists. I call all you guys the pop cultists, but these are the ones that move the cult forward, okay? These are the people that help support the podcast and the YouTube channel over at Patreon.com slash NerdyNomicon. For just $1 a month, you guys can get early access to all of the videos, all of the episodes of Nerdy Nomicon podcast, plus some exclusive, uh, some exclusive stuff there, because we have episodes that you can't hear anywhere else except for Patreon. One love to the hip hop streets and one love to the pop cultists at patreon.com slash nerdynomicon. Okay, well, the, my egotistical face is coming back here, so I'll talk to you in like two seconds. Whew, okay, so we have just watched the pilot of Nosferatu. Um, I love it. I absolutely loved it. There were definitely enough differences between the book and the show to be noticeable for someone like me. I mean, I've read the book three times and listened to the audiobook twice. Don't exactly love Kate Mulgroon's uh, interpretation of it, but that that is what that is. Um, but at the same time, I loved it. To me, this was a pilot done right. It was true enough to the book to where you could identify with and recognize a lot of the characters but it was different enough to where I feel like they could explore different aspects of the story that is not touched on in the books, as well as 
some of the changes that they made could end up paying off in side plots that have nothing to do with what's in the original book anyway, and still keep the show feeling fresh for those of us who know the original source material and being awesome for the newbies, the uninitiated into the world of Nosferatu. Um, one notable thing that I kind of had a qualm with is Bing Partridge does not show up this way in the book. I don't know why they made that decision, but I don't know. I'm not going to harp on it too much right now because I feel like it could pay off later on in the series. At least I hope they do. Um, it's probably just for the simple reason to try to keep all the main characters consolidated and keep the uh, human drama alive with the main pro and antagonists. But that was fine. Uh, one thing I do have to say, Sailor J as Maggie Lee, freaking awesome. If you don't know who she is, um, you must not be on YouTube very often. So I'm, it's this chick. The last time I gave you guys advice, it looked a little something like this. No, Maya. Because I'm panicking. Blend that fucking net. <laughs> Find yourself a husband. Don't talk about the constitution. What can I say? I'm a fountain of wisdom. Yeah, she's in this show, which is a huge inspiration for all of us small time YouTubers and frankly, even big time YouTubers everywhere. Um, it's pretty freaking inspirational and Homegirl's a great actress. She really is. Uh, I, it was great seeing her as Maggie Lee. One thing that I did notice about the character um, that has nothing to do with Sailor J, but uh, she didn't seem to be stuttering, which is kind of important in the books, but we'll get there, I guess. We'll get there, maybe. But uh, Sailor J, absolutely amazing. Zachary Quinto, this guy right here, holy crap, he, he he was so creepy as Charlie Manx. Whether he was like 100 years old or like 35 years old or however old Zachary Quinto is supposed to be in, you know, real life in, in this world, uh, I thought Zachary Quinto was very um, dark and menacing. And I think that he brought Charlie Manx to life in a beautiful way. Charlie is usually far more gaunt than Zachary Quinto, like almost inhumanly gaunt. I mean, granted, it's an illustration, but this is Charlie Manx, right there. Zachary Quinto does not look like that, but at the same time, he still brings that menacing feel to the character, and I, it was great. Um, I think that this was a very strong pilot. It was a very good pilot. I am all in on this show, and I hope that if you've checked it out or are just checking this review out right now, you are too. This being the pilot, I'm gonna give you guys pretty much no spoilers in this because I want you to see it for yourselves, man. I want you to check this show out for yourselves. As this series progresses here on this channel, I am going to be getting deeper into spoiler territory. And I'm gonna have that clearly marked because I don't wanna ruin things for you guys. Uh, I think that this is going to be a phenomenal series. It's already a phenomenal book. If you haven't read it, read it. Uh, if you've not checked out this pilot, watch it because we're going to go deep, man. I have a feeling that uh, this is going to be one of AMC's next big hits. Some comments I want to highlight from the group that I was talking in while this episode was happening to us. Uh, from Anna, I think that this managed to get the feel of the books in that it's creepy, but with a wink. I have feelings it's going to get real ugly, though. I am all in. I agree, Anna. I totally agree. She also said later on in this post, I am feeling personally attacked by Vic's perm. As am I. I believe as are all of us. Christina Robledo said, loved it so far. Anyone catch the glimpse of Charlie Manx's map? Yes, I did catch that and it was awesome. The Inscapes of America was so cool and it has a nice little nod to so many of Joe Hill's other books in um, the Innsmouth Keyhole, Innsmouth Keyhole? Lovecraft Keyhole, uh, the Lovecraft Keyhole, Key House, um, the Treehouse of the Mind, which was obviously from Horns, and Pennywise's Circus, a nice little reference to his father's work, you know, Pennywise the Dancing Clown from Stephen King's It. So I thought that that was absolutely awesome. And also, Dina Cullerton, absolutely loved it. Pretty sure that was my high school that they were at. Ooh, a local. Awesome, that is, that's gotta be so cool, seeing some place that you went to school, being in a show that not only is on a major network, but also done so damn well. 
So what did you guys think of the episode, man? Let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys on the next one.